Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this language, this language L, which is the set of all strings W in 0, 1, 2 star, such that W is a ternary representation of an integer that is a multiple of 5. What? And we have to give a DFA for L. So recall that DFA just stands for deterministic finite automaton. So that means that we need to give a state-based machine, it has to have a finite number of states, just some number of states, and it has to be deterministic. So no matter what state we're in, whether we see a 0, 1, or 2, we need to be able to go to another state. We can't leave a transition out. So what I'm going to do for this problem is something slightly different in that I'm going to solve it live. So I don't have an idea of exactly what the machine will look like. I'm just going to solve it live here. So what is this language? Well, ternary means base 3. So that means instead of zeros and ones, like for binary strings, ternary just means zeros, ones, and twos. So for example, if we have two, one, two, maybe let's put a zero on the front. Well, although that doesn't do anything. So in base three, well, what does that mean? Well, the first place is the ones place, of course. Then the second the one to the left is not the tens place or the twos place, it's the threes place. Then this one's the nines place. So the number in base 10 is two times nine for this number right here, plus one times three, plus two times one, because this is the ones place. So that would equal 18 plus 3, which is 21, plus 2, so that's 23 in base 10. Okay, so what we would want to do is to accept the strings that are a multiple of 5. So either zeros, or 5, or 10, or 15, or any number that is a multiple of 5. Cool. So whenever you, so here's a pro tip. Whenever you are asked a question that is like a multiple of something, this means to do modular arithmetic. And why is that? Because when you're given a DFA, what you need to do is to make a state for every one of the possibilities. And either the number is a multiple of 5 or it isn't, but in the case of isn't, there are multiple cases within that, such as it's not divisible by 5, but it's a number multiplied by 5 plus 1, or multiple of 5 plus 2, etc. But there are only 5 possibilities of what the string could it be. It could either be divisible by 5, or divisible by 5 plus 1, divisible by 5 plus 2, divisible by 5 plus 3, divisible by 5 plus 4. If we did divisible by 5 plus 5, well then by adding 5, we get another number that is divisible by 5. And so we wrap back around to the case that we were in before. So what we can think of here is whenever we divide by 5, there's some remainder, either it's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And those are all the possibilities, so let's make a state for each one of those possibilities. So I'm going to have a state q0, q1, q2, q3, and q4, where the subscript here is indicating what the, yeah, what the remainder actually is. So in the case of strings that are either all zeros or are the empty string, we consider that zero. So, and zero is a multiple of five. So when we want this, the strings that are a multiple of five, the state that should be final among these five should be this one, because this is the only state that's representing a multiple of five. So I'm gonna make this state final. So now what we need to do is, because we need to make a DFA, we need a transition on zero, transition on one, and a transition on two somewhere. So. Whenever you're faced with a problem like this, where you're having to uh, 
make a DFA for a multiple of something, well, what you need to think about is how the, str the DFA is processing the string. So remember, if we're given a string w1, w2, 3, up to wn, the DFA is processing it from left to right. So when we are looking at this number, for example, we're reading the 0 first, not the 2 over here. So we're reading the 0 first. So let's think about this. Suppose that we have a string so far, dot, 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 up to wn minus 1. And then we see a 0 where the first part right here is a multiple of 5. And then we see a 0 here. Well, since we're in base 3, shifting over the number by one position to the left just means multiplying the number by 3. So if we had a multiple of 5 before and we added 3, uh, we multiply by 3 onto that, it's still a multiple of 5. So, in the case of Q0, well, if we're in Q0, that means that we are, have currently seen a number that's a multiple of 5, and if we have seen another 0, then we must still be in the state that's a multiple of 5, which is Q0 here. So, I'm going to redirect the Q0, uh, sorry, the 0 transition to be in Q0, because we will still have a number that's a multiple of 5. Now, let's suppose that instead of 0, we saw a 1. Well, what we did if we saw a 1 is we shifted the number over by one position, which means we multiplied by 3, So, and then we added 1 onto it. So when we had 0, all that we're really doing is we're just adding 1 onto the number when we see a 1 here. So wherever the 0 transition goes, the 1 transition is going to go one further along the chain, so to speak. So if it was, if the zeros for some reason went to Q2, then the one transition would go to three, and the two transition would go to Q4. So here, the one transition is gonna go over to Q1, so that's the one transition, and then the two transition goes here. So far, so good. Okay, so now let's figure out where the, so all we really need to do is figure out where the zero transition goes, because the one and the two transitions are just one and two further along the chain. If the one transition, for example, ends up in Q4, the two transition would go to Q0, because if we have a number that has remainder four, and we add one more onto it, we get remainder five, but as we saw before, that's, we get a number that's a multiple of five. So what do we do in the Q1 state on input 0? So now think the number here is not a multiple of 5 anymore. It's a multiple of 5 plus 1. So it has remainder 1, and let's say that we saw a 0 after. Well, then that means we multiplied the number by 3. So then now the number has a remainder of 3. So all that we need to do for the rest of these states, it just multiply the remainder by 3, and for the 0 transition at least. So if we had remainder 1, multiply the remainder by 3, which, so we get 3. So the 0 transition goes here, the 1 transition goes here, and the 2 transition goes one further along the chain. And we can verify that, because if we had a remainder of 1, multiply by 3, so now we have 3, and add 2, we get 5, and we saw 5 goes back to 0. So now let's do the 2 transition, uh, I mean Q2. So on uh, input 0, well, if we had a remainder of 2, multiply by 3, that gives us 6, and now reduce it by 5, so now we get 1. So 6 minus 5 is 1. So the 0 transition goes here, the 1 transition must go here then, and then the 2 transition must go here. For the Q3 state, where do we go on 0? Well, the remainder is 3, multiply by 3 is 9, and then reduce it by 5 until we get under 5, which is 4. So we get down to 4. So the 0 transition goes here. The 1 transition, therefore, must go to the 1 further along the chain, so 1 here getting cluttered, and the 2 transition must go one further along the chain. 
And then now, finally, let's do Q4. So on input 0, the remainder was 4 before, multiplied by 3, which gives us 12. And then minus 5 is 7, minus 5 is 2. So the 0 transition goes here. The 1 transition goes one further along. And then the 2 transition goes one further along. Because the 1 went to 3, 2 must go to Q4. And let's verify that this is the case. So let's think of the number, let's say, 15. Well, 15 in uh, decimal, well, let's see, what would that be? That would be 1 in the 9's place and 2 in the 3's place. And then a 0 in the 1's place. So that's 9 plus 2 times 3 plus uh, 0 is 15. So let's see, 1, 2, 0. And then if we did 1, 2, 1, or 1, 2, 2, then uh, those go to either Q1 or Q2, and neither of them are final. So we have verified by modular arithmetic that this is a correct DFA. But the thing that you should understand here is that this can be adaptable to any kind of representation in any multiple. So it didn't have to be exclusive to 5 or exclusive to ternary. You can do this in base 17, and a multiple of 23. As long as you have, um, it, whatever the multiple is, you have to have that many states. And for whatever the base is, you need to have that many different transitions per state. And then all you need to do is just to figure out where the zero transition goes. The one goes one further along, the two goes one further along than that, etc. until you run out of the characters in the representation. So here we only had 0, 1s, and 2s to deal with, but if I had 17, I would have 0 goes here, then 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to 16. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find, out, uh, find that out a different way. Um, I may do more live solves like this in the future. Um, there are many other links in the video description. Um, I would encourage you to just like and support this channel via subscribing. Uh, for example, if you support this content, um, I love making uh, I love making videos like this. And as always, I will see you next time.